And saying you're good to drive. Yep. Cool. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, we are here um, June 3rd uh, for a special meeting of the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Um, we just have one agenda item, which is to go into executive session. Um, so I will just read out that to get going. Um, <clears throat> so uh, going, we will be voting uh, to go into executive session uh, to determine positions relative to affordable housing development matters that may be subject to negotiations develop a strategy for negotiations and or instruct negotiators pursuant to CRS uh, section 24-6-4024E and to hold a conference with the county attorney to receive legal advice on specific legal questions pertaining to affordable housing projects pursuant to CRS uh, section 24-6-4024B. Um, so I'd, um, Look for a motion to go into executive session uh, pursuant to. I think the, Sarah oh, oh, sorry, I didn't quite hear. Okay, w was that a motion, Sarah? Yeah, I said so. Uh, second, second. second. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments on that? Nothing. So, me. so look for a vote. Uh, Aye. Commissioner Lodge. Aye. 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 Uh, so we are going to executive session. And sorry, I should say I think for. Um, for this, let me see if I get the um, invite or, you know, uh, people we're inviting in. Uh, so in addition to the commissioners, we'll have uh, the county attorney and uh, both deputy county attorneys, Ruth Bourne and Melissa Decker uh, and Chris Floyd, county attorney. Uh, we'll have two members of the Housing Authority uh, Development Subcommittee, Chapin with Chance and Dan Northcraft. Um, and Anne is part of that committee too. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't okay. I, I had you down, but wasn't sure in what capacity. So, okay, Anne Snyder, also from the Development Subcommittee. Um, then Michael Yerman, uh, contractor consultant on uh, affordable housing. Um, Jackie Wheelahan, the Housing Authority Director. Uh, Tim Bergman, County Manager, and I believe that is it. Okay. <laughs> And we'll keep the recording on, I believe, um, since we have folks outside the county. Thanks, Tracy. You're welcome. Um, okay, who is? I'd like to on? just preface okay, that, great. that comment by saying, um, because of, of the Housing Authority subcommittee folks being present today, it's not subject fully to attorney-client privilege. In the event that a topic comes up that y'all start to discuss that you're asking for advice on, I may say we'll hold off on that, excuse our friends from the Housing Authority, and then discuss those questions later. At which point in time, then we will probably turn off the recording if the conversation is going to be subject to a client privilege. Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. I don't have a way to get on the Wi Fi to email Sarah the Rubix. Okay. Do you want to real quick send that yep. director and then yep. uh, sorry to yep. Sarah, we're gonna send you the I'm handing out uh, here. There's a there's a grading rubrics um, so that you get it. Okay. So uh, <laughs> yes. And, and sorry, I just want to say just so we can keep moving, we I think we do have a hard stop at eleven. Okay. Um, that's great. So that's works great for me. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so uh, on Friday, you had three developers present sorry, we need one of these two, um, the budgets for the affordable housing development. Um, and wisely, I think we have chosen to go out and tour all of the products. Um, what I have created for you here, and we can email this, there's nothing special about, about these, um, so that you can, you can modify these um, Rubik's however you would like, um, but I kind of wanted to create something that as you tour the different facilities, you have a way to start grading um, sure. your, your thoughts. The second, the first thing I really want to get into real quick is just an update on, um, on the grant budget. So I kind of had a, I have to admit, I had a momentary freak out this, this, this uh, this morning? No, oh, this morning. On, on, on Sunday when I was going through the grant budget, I was like, how am I off 
so much. Uh, and what I realized is that the grant did not have the hospital district site in it. So I was like, I'm like, I am, and it had been a year, you know, since yeah. I, I touched it. Um, so it, it's, I, I want the commissioners to understand um, potential costs um, going forward that were not included in the hospital district or in the dollar grant because the hospital district improvements were not part of that grant. Uh, that, that property was added. We updated that for the state to get additional density, and you guys obviously acquired it, and I think it's a great site. But there's a sewer line. There is um, any uh, remediation work, which will be capping the soils on that site. It, again, it's relatively flat. The other one that's not in that list today that I thought I was I thought I was okay with, but I'm not after I just toured the site this morning, is this the electric and the gas aren't there. The electric that I thought was there is just a single pool over to a, a light. So there's no transformers or anything. So that's gonna be that's gonna be additional costs, and especially if we go we go underground as required. So yep. Michael, is that that is the hospital site or both sides? That's just the hospital site. We have the budget for the for the third street site. So the 1.2 had that in there. So why, and then, and then so for 20 units, the other big thing that has changed is that Parkville Waters tap fees from when we submitted went from eight to 11 and Leadville Sanitation went from 8,500 to 15,000 per unit. That equates just on the 20 units to I think what I have in there, I don't have it for me. 26,000 times 20. Well, it's 190,000 just in tap fees, just in the increase, and then so that that's the that's the bad news is that we're basically um, you know underwater as it relates to tap just because of the tap fees alone. So have we, have we, um, have we park builder sanitation to ask for any reduction? Do we think that that's not at all possible? I would highly doubt they would. We were talking about this before. Typically, uh, they don't, the reason that they are going to struggle to waive tap fees is because their debt service is really, is tied directly to the income that comes from tap fees. And so unless they created some policy prior to issuing a debt service for their new facilities, then it's really hard. And that's my experience with my own utilities in Crested Butte when I had enterprise districts. We actually paid from the affordable housing fund to the enterprise fund on every tap fee deferral um, that we paid. So the increase of taps with new infrastructure? I have no idea why they, Jack, do you know why they increase their tap fees? Because they can. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because maybe we could get them lower. Not true. Um, it's certainly worth a discussion given the amount, right? But then the other piece of the puzzle is that I really want to be clear on every additional unit above 20. So we're talking with adding the hospital district site, we're talking, you know, 24 to 26 units. Every additional one right now I'm estimating is about a $42,000 increase on in the budget. When you add in the service line, the tap fee, and then when you also, the other thing that's not in there is the gas and electric costs for a new transformer or whatever. So. It's not insignificant for us to increase density. Um, at the end of the day, though, I mean, we try, your goal is to put as many housing units on the ground, so it's just a consideration. The last thing I'll add, just as it relates to it, it's not all doom and gloom, though, because you did receive, what, $880,000 from? $850,000, we'll see. Tomorrow we we'll we'll see how we get it. From the congressional, the congressional award you had for the site. So, I mean, I would I would predict that we wind up using almost half of that to get the additional infrastructure we need to go to 24 units. If what, that makes sense. What, what is it easier for me to just chime in or raise my hand? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. Was um was that Jackie specifically for this project? I know you wrote that with the housing authority. I'm just asking because I'm wondering if that was the housing authority award. <laughs> need to ask the housing authority to assign it to this project? Was it at the beginning when this was intended to be managed by the housing authority, but now it's the county's project? So yes, I have, I have asked the question um, if it could be done before we get it, if it could be um, rerouted to the county, uh, but maybe it would just be easier for the housing authority to do a letter 
or something um, requesting that. Um, I have explained it to multiple people that don't email me back. Um, so tomorrow we're having an informational discussion with HUD um, on how to access these funds. And it's not just going to be me, it's going to be all the awards, uh, awardees. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know how that's going to go. But I, as soon as I get through that, I'll let you know what I learned. So to be continued, I guess, is the, is the answer to that. But in all good faith, I think you need to know all the information moving forward mm -hmm. of the current situation. So I mean, we certainly couldn't move away from doing anything on the hospital district site. but. Uh, I mean, my hope is that we have 50 applicants for this housing project and, you know, we're, we're able to, to build it out and take advantage of getting a contractor mobilized. Um, it's 50 grand is about in line of where I see most projects per unit on a subsidy from the local governments for what it's worth. So you, it's tracking, um, but those tap fee increases. Now we do have a hundred thousand dollar contingency that makes in the construction budget so depending on where bids come out but uh, certainly doesn't cover the whole thing okay so that's the delivery update so the next thing i want to get into um it is <clears throat> i really spent the weekend really going through the three proposals and on your rubik sheet you see the top piece what i what i basically did was I went and I took what was the most comparable across the board model, which was a three bedroom unit that all three produced, and kind of gave you some just breakdowns of where we sit with a three person household, AMI, the, the gap in it. And then what I, what I consider these additional costs that are certainly gonna come full force at us the second we go into negotiations because there's a lot of things that were kind of hidden and their proposals, which you have to tease out, which I'm used to doing. That's how you guys got me here. Um, the uh, So going down the list, there's, what I would tell you is that when you go to visit each of these facilities, my, you can, you don't, you're not tied in any way to this Rubik's, but to me, it gives you an opportunity to kind of take your notes. This is really intended for the BOCC to, to, to think what the things that I, if, if I were in your shoes, I would really be thinking about. I gave 30 points to affordability and then 10 points to each other subcategory underneath there. Certainly, if you have other things you want to add to this Rubik's, 100 points isn't like some magic number, um, but it does, you know, it does give you a good, you know, academic score, I guess, if you want it, if you want to stay in the academic realm. Um, but let's start with the just general things that I want to point out to that I saw in each proposal. Solution builders, um, you know, I think number one, it's really important for us to be paying attention to the, the final finishes in these. They were not apples to apples at all, that the sightings were not apples to apples. Um, and so there's some things that I think because of your climate that you're gonna have to have uh, to make these units durable for your owners. Um, a metal wainscot was on, was on fade, fitting west and wasn't on the others. Um, my experience, and I would defer to the three behind me on the back row, but my experience is that when you have snow piled up against the side of a house for six months of the year, if you don't do a metal wings coat, you're going to just lose siding every year and have to repair it. Um, we were required that on everything I did in Crested Butte. Uh, so that, that add-on would certainly be an add-on. Uh, they did not, they, what was very frustrating to me when I was going through their proposal was they just assumed the third street site was flat and that we were going to put in a giant retaining wall. That retaining wall is not in our budget. So uh, that is an expense and actually uh, creating West is the only one that actually put in a retaining wall into their proposal. Um, Can, do, I'm just looking up retaining walls listed under the fading West. Um, uh, they have it as an add-on. I'll, oh, get, to that. I'll, okay, get, to, I'll okay. get to that here in just a minute. Uh, what, um, with the V cup and the mitigation, will we be able to, I mean, does that have to like coincide pretty tightly with the material removal and putting in that retaining wall? Yeah, we, we certainly, we have $150,000 for the uh, site uh, in the grant for Third Street. 
And so, depending on how the site is carved up, well, I guess my point in saying on solution builders, what's frustrating to me is they just acted like the whole site was flat. And if you looked at Fading West, for example, they actually priced out the two places they would need retaining walls versus what the other two builders did, which is completely ignore the fact that I specifically called out how you're going to do with topography in the, in, in the proposal. So, so I was a little flesh. Go ahead. Is it possible that we do the retaining wall and that's all prep? Yep. Yep. No, I think, I think, I think we, if we, Move forward with one of the. If we move well, if we move forward with any of these <clears throat> this summer, we should be putting in that retaining wall. We have Morrison Engineering. If it's over three feet in, it requires it to be engineered anyways. Yeah. Four, four feet. Okay. Um, if it's over four feet, it needs to be engineered anyways. So uh, we have the engineer on 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 uh, retainer right now. So now would be the time to do it. And we have to any of that excavation that comes out, we got to deal with anyways. So. Uh, now it's the time to deal with it. Um, and I think it's the case in everything. Um, roof pitch on solution builders is a really big concern of mine. Maybe I could be talked out of that from the three in the back um, again. Um, but those flat roofs are going to hold snow. Um, and at a certain point, a uh, really big winter, snow removal off those roofs is an expense for a future homeowner, as well as whether or not. If they could only even do like a slight modification, then you probably are looking at hopefully going to a metal roof, which I think is a little bit probably easier for them to do because they could just put metal on in the factory. But at least then you have the ability for that roof to slide. Um, so those are upgrades. And then the last one I would just put in there, their flooring was okay, but the quartz countertops compared to Fading West versus the laminate countertops, um, again, on a home ownership build, those that that upgrade to quartz is something that I always look at because it's a huge benefit to the final owner. Um, so I, I think it's an, an important one. Overall, though, I think they did the second best job of really getting into what their actual costs were. Solution solution builders did. Yep, they they because they did they did look at what their vertical costs were. They I mean you can go through their list and they have in a landscaping budget, they have a road based budget, they have in transportation. Um, the other the other thing I will say when you look at the price per square foot, one thing that they don't have in their add on cost is going to be construction financing, which can be very significant. Um, and it's something that I think we really need to tease out to ensure that I understand correctly that they will not need a loan. Um, Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, as you again, when you go to the factory and you guys are touring that, that's a really important question. Like the questions, if I'm in your shoes, are what's it going to take to increase roof pitch? What's it going to take to um, put metal roofs on? And what are our, what are our cost upgrades for you know trying to get these finishes to to where we want them? Again, you have. They are the only one that has a. a to, to the positive on their affordability gap. They have 26 of the positive on that. But you can see, the last thing I'll point out is, you know, Fading West, who I think sharpened their pencil the best, their total development is 9.1, and you have 7.4 and 7, or 6.9 for the other two, which tells you something, somebody, somebody didn't do their homework because Fading West 9.1 had in the retaining walls, had in the parking areas, had in, had in all that extra stuff. Um, so I think that's important to know. I mean, there's three units in there too, so you have about a million extra dollars mm -hmm. in Fading West for the extra density in there, but you're still about a, another million in, in cost there. Um, so cool. that, it, that is Solution Builders, and I guess, because well, I want to keep us on track, is there anything else that folks want to add from your, especially from the development subcommittee, on your impressions on the proposals from Solution Builders? They did have force air, which I liked for their HVAC. I thought their HVAC systems were, were going to be a little bit higher quality. It's all single family, uh, less set and stitch. Um, <clears throat> perhaps if uh, you know, I can, we may have two story, it's two story single family, but um, less set and stitch, set and, set and stitch timing or potential issues, you know, versus townhomes, one thing to be considered. I wonder if it's. <clears throat> 
I know we're tight on time. I don't know how much you want to negotiate with them, but uh, maybe a paired home or a small town home is the right. I mean, you've got the set and stitch issues, but I think the other two went back and said, here's our duplex or here's our town home. So that might be worth some exploring with them. They have one side that has no windows, right? So that would be pretty easy. I, um, on your point, Dan, what I would say with this group, again, I, I'm being real honest. I can work from where I sit as your consultant. There's not a single one of these three proposals that I don't think I can get your houses dealt with, where I'm like, I'm worried that they're not going to perform, which is a huge thing. So with this group, with what, what Dan is talking about, I actually think they would actually really go to, to put it to task to do duplex designs because they want to get involved in that community. And they have to build duplexes if you're going to build up here um, in the long run. I also think that it will potentially allow them to look at their trust systems and do the trust systems on site when they stitch. You can reduce some costs that way. Just ask them for some shaft liner in between. Like that. Yeah. I guess I. Chief, do you have anything? Nothing else on the solution. I would just say the lack of construction financing is certainly a strong aspect. Okay. Um, I saw Sarah, I saw your comment. Yeah, they do, they slide. Um, yeah, I would be really worried about like requiring, I don't know, I'm not, I wouldn't be a fan since we have so, we want to be so close and I don't think any of those spaces between the buildings, whether they're a single family home or duplexes would be like functional winter time. Um, but well, in my experience in Crested Butte is they're not like your sides. Yours, I mean, in fact, I didn't build a single unit in Crested Butte that didn't have the upstairs living because once the roof slid for the first after the first storm, you couldn't see out the bedroom windows downstairs. I mean, that's my that's yeah, I mean, I'm guessing you guys have a pretty similar. I mean, they got 300, they, Crested Butte averages 300 inches, but that's where I'm taking that from. Um, we can we can talk about it. I'm really concerned though, Sarah, if that if those roofs don't slide with like the the two twelves that they have on those those buildings right now, that what the alternative is someone's gonna actually they have two options. They can pay someone to go up there or they're gonna wind up on a ladder up there by themselves. So right. that's even worse. So I mean I've only done one metal roof. Um, we ended up doing snow guards on that. I think you could get by with asphalt. I think you should increase the roof pitch because the 212 is ugly, but with an asphalt shingle, I think you'll be fine. I mean, you could on a what is that on the interior dimension, it's like 14 6 span or something like that. Like, you can get a roof truss that'll do 95 pounds per square foot. Like, I'm um, um, of all the things that I'm paranoid and worry about, a roof falling in is not one of them. Like, I think the trusses are well designed enough that that's not something. I have, I, other things keep me up at night at over construction. And that's fine. If you guys are okay with asphalt singles, in Crested Butte, it was a mandatory, you had to do metal roofs. So and we wanted the roofs to slide, but that's, that's your guys' community versus us. So, and I actually, and then Sarah, the one thing I would add is if, if if, if, if we go with what Dan talked about earlier and pushing them to do duplexes, which I think is the right decision, um, when there's blank walls, we would have more, we'd have more space between buildings. That's part of the reason to do that. So, um, anything else on the solution builder? Sorry. Another, yep. A couple other two bit opinions. Um, we, I don't know what their siding type is. Um, and maybe it depends on if you have metal roof or not, and if it slides and there's snow up against it. We have not run into any issues where the snow sitting against the siding has caused problems. I think what we've found is the house gives off enough heat that it, you know, there's some snow milk up against the siding, but a little gap develops. So yeah. you could potentially save some money that way. And um, I mean, I guess these are comments for all of them. We're 
We're doing quartz countertops as well. Um, I don't know on this if we want to save a buck and do laminate, like there's some decent laminates out there. My my gut is that we should price, we should at a minimum get a price to do the quartz countertops. It is for saleability for us is gonna be big. And my experience between the difference between laminate and quartz is very little now. I haven't looked in a while. Uh, I would, I, again, at the end of the day, we want the buyers to have something that they want to take care of. Yeah. So, um, I, th I think, so my last thought on solution builders and maybe all of them is, I guess solution builders in particular, I don't feel like they try super hard on the design. So I think if that's a direction you guys want to go, I would go back at them and say, tell me about paired homes. Can we get a little more creativity than this? Can we not have parking all across the front? Um, I mean, I think Oakwood knows pretty well how to do, so I can't remember who owns who, but Oakwood's part of Solution Builders, I think they understand how to do affordable projects, so there's some more levers I would press on them to pull to make this better, but their price point is good. Yeah, yeah. I agree, they didn't try um, very hard on the site planning, even after we had a second meeting with them to tell them to make some corrections, they didn't necessarily respond. Like they didn't even need the setback, the side yard setbacks for the zoning code. Um, so I, you could push, you could definitely push on that. Um, the last thing I would add, so the two, the two as we, so the, uh, the non housing issues that I would add that are positives. One is the construction financing. If I again, if I'm understanding correctly, they don't need a construction loan, which would save, which is actually probably the difference in the price here. Um, and two, the other big one that I think Jackie and I both feel that we were impressed upon is they have the resources to assist the housing authority and the lottery, the marketing, and bring the things that will bring buyers to the table versus the other two groups that really don't have that in-house like kind of system already. Um, so they even had like the you know first time home buyer group that you know, they, they, could, they could join to talk about. Yeah. And I also like the fact that they also, um, you know, on the, you know, trying to be a little bit proactive on their warranties stuff. So, uh, and just so you know, no matter what, the one year warranty is just like a, is an industry standard, so. Yeah. You're talking about solution, Michael? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so going to the, so with that, that that's that one. So going to Addenburg, um, I think I got probably most annoyed this weekend by their proposal. Um, and I'm being real blunt here, but I, after I really dug into what was in their proposal, number one, they didn't do anything. With, I mean, they did nothing to improve their site design. They just said we could do whatever, which is like, we gave you $5,000 to come in here with some, some ideas yeah. of how to lay out the site. And then again, they treated the site like it was flat. Um, but the bigger one that I thought was, that really upset me is when I actually started looking, so I was in Denver this weekend, and I started looking at what they're building in Denver versus what they had for those single story ones. And if you read in there, those are vinyl, they have vinyl siding on those houses. They have vinyl floors. They're not even like, the, it's the cheapest floors, the cheapest. So there's a reason that those houses in, are showing up the, those four single story ones are showing up at like amazing prices because they're mobile homes. I mean, they are not, they have not, they had not, they had not put any effort in talking to Bonneville about what is it going to cost to get these up to like a, a nice standard. So I think when we go back and we, and when, A, when we talk about them, I think when you, when my, my encourage with the BSCC, what I encourage you when you go to those sites, the stuff in Denver, is different than what they're quoting. And you need to be asking the questions, like you can see the questions here of yeah. saying, what is it gonna cost to get our finishes to be like that house in Denver? How are we gonna get, how are we gonna get the smart side and the stuff, you know, like the comparable sidings versus vinyl siding, like absolutely under no condition would I do vinyl siding up in the mountains like here, you know? So those are the types of things that I think we need to tease out of them and then they would, I will require them to resubmit all of these will need to be required to resubmit pricing with the upgrades so we have so you know what exactly before you make a decision um <clears throat> their construction financing is going to be a, a cost for sure they are going out to external 
we're going to pay construction interest for the duration of their project. Uh, and then the last thing that I kind of, after Google touring their projects in Denver over the weekend, they don't really have a, a big project. So I'm actually, I walked out of here on Friday feeling like they had the right team to do the local piece of everything. And I left or my house this morning, or left my fiance's house this morning thinking, I don't know. So I'm, inter I'm really interested to, I, again, I won't be there with you on Friday. I'm going to go on Monday and do the tour on my own with them because uh, I got to get on an airplane on Thursday afternoon. But um, I, again, these questions that we're talking about today are really important for us to, to tease out of them. Yeah. Michael, what do you mean they don't have a big, big project? So everything I saw on their references was about four to six to maybe eight units. They didn't have a 20 something unit project. And then the other thing I'm concerned about is, is their construction financing. I mean, when you look at the amount, it's probably more like in the 8.5 million is where these are going to wind up being for construction financing. Cause again, they don't have a lot of their costs in, in here. I'm just really concerned about their access to capital um, because the projects they described we're working with like the Elevation Land Trust, which, which is a great model, but the Elevation Land Trust, again, has contracts and their supply, they, they do a lot of the back end stuff for them. Not again, like I said, I've done it. I am more than happy to be, be here and do that for the county as we go along. I can certainly assist with getting to Chaffa and the Prop 123 and all that, that's what I do. But I think there's going to be a lot more handholding from my end, which again, I work with them, but it just, it's just going to be a lot more. I also think for Jackie on the marketing piece, we're going to be doing all of it. I don't think they have anybody on their team that's going to help Jackie with marketing or anything. Again, that's part of what we got to figure out as we move forward. Anything else on Adam Berg? I was just clarifying for the you know they have a project in their portfolio West Holden Place project is sixty seven. That's so, so that, those multi family. That's a multi family it's apartment. The, you're, you're and saying they, and they haven't built that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are two. I think they actually two multi family that they had just gotten contracts that haven't approved yet. Yeah. I think they're else for like one, two, three, four. From what I saw, I think their projects, they've successfully demonstrated that they can build a house. What I think, the reason I left with a salty, left with a salty taste in my mouth on this is I really am upset that they did not, <clears throat> they gave you, they gave you price points and did no homework on upgrading those from just a double wide mobile home from Bonneville. And Bonneville would have easily, I mean, that's, that's what they do. I mean, it would have been a it would have been a half hour phone call conversation with Bonneville to say, "What's your price for quartz? What's your price for this? What's your price mm -hmm. for that?" Which kind of makes me like, if you're not willing to do that for this, I paid you I paid you five thousand dollars to do that. So mm -hmm. that's why at the end of the day, I was a little upset about it. Again, yeah. I, I think they do have they do have the resources to pull from Denver from the from the labor side if they get in a pinch, which will be. Which, which is a plus for them, so. Do you have any concern about their factory being Bonneville and not having control of the factory and it being out of state? Actually, Bonneville of the, of the three has, has Westwood uses Bonneville. Um, they, they did a couple. Okay. They did a couple of Fading West and then they did a few stick built and so they pulled from a, several different places. Okay. So Westwood is not all Bonneville. Okay. I think Western is primarily Bonneville, and they've Maybe been, primarily. Would be they've good. been, I mean, I haven't I gone out and explicitly asked them, but they made it sound like they were pretty happy with Bonneville, that it was, the factory was maybe less new and nice than Painting West, but they knew what they were doing, putting stuff together, and they felt good about it, so and whatever. That, what I would add to that Western. is, is that they've gotten the product to Bloodville. That's probably Yeah, that's it. probably the one. Yeah, because Solution Builders hasn't gotten the boxes here yet. That's why 
That's true. Right. This will be the first yeah, time. That's, that's roofs. That's the, if they increase that roof pitch, it's going to make their transportation costs more challenging. If in fact they can even perform, right? I I actually there's no way that if they if they're we do if we all they're they're all going to have to send like they're going to all going to drop trusses and do the roof yeah, on site. Same. I just again that's what, that's what West West does too. Yeah, I, I I hate to say it like this, but I I think it would be. Who, I think it would be a big miss for this group not to require typical roof pitches. And there's, a, there's, a re, there's a reason you have a history of roof. You have a reason that there's a history of 612 plus here in this town. It's not because people wanted to build nice roof pitches, it's because you guys get snow. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a, across the mountain range in six foot. Yeah. Unless you get an exception, generally. I mean, you get, you get, you get yeah. Um, so that that's, but again, I think they, they flying trusses and, and stuff like that. I don't think is, I mean, it's it's a it's an extra week, from my experience, is an extra week of on site, but they everything comes on the all the trusses come on a truck, and it's just, it's just putting a roof on. So I don't know. I don't see it as a big deal. Again, you know, just the biggest thing about it is when you're there on site. Um, really be pressing on did your proposal have this finished does your did those single wides have this the, you know, the wood finish the board and batten that you showed us because it doesn't seem like it did mm -hmm. uh and then the other one is the flooring the vinyl flooring versus the kind of engineer flooring now the other two do nowadays yeah. like i'm kind of a little kind of perplexed that bon that bonneville hasn't upgraded their flooring from, from vinyl because that's the foreign, foreign products from the last 10 years have just drastically been improved. So I'd be surprised that Bonneville doesn't have that option. But again, when you go through their spec sheet, it had vinyl flooring as the, as the flooring. Okay. Uh, Can we, I appreciate Dan has kind of made that inquiry uh, independently. Can we follow up? Not only ask Adam to, like you said, get, get that appropriate pricing for quality increase, but um, can we reach out to KW to kind of tease out more of their experience? Before I'm, we yeah, I'm happy to reach out to Kyle and ask questions. Yeah, we can do a reference on that. Um, one other thing, and maybe this applies to solution builders and Adam Burger both, one of them had in their proposal like six or half dozen maybe eight like local contractors and it looks to me like they just had some preliminary conversations got their logo off their website and stuck it on there like i think both of these guys are going to be surprised to find out how difficult it is for to get local work done and maybe that's uh they can bring some i mean i a handful of my guys come from Denver because it's just it works better um, but I think both of them you should see how if they understand how difficult trades are in the mountains um, and what their plan is for that and see if that passes the sniff test yeah I agree Dan I think you know I think they were trying to say that but impressive but i think we all know a little bit better maybe <laughs> if we can get local folks then great but i do think we should make it clear to them that, that that's very challenging not like yeah plan on getting so some i don't think that should be an expectation of ours to only use local things it, it, so. yeah I, I do I, I do think the one benefit is is that Again, and we'll get into what the next step is going to be here in just a second. But they do have quite a bit of runway to either, all three have a, a longer runway because they're not breaking ground till May of next year. So they have a year to, and, and again, to your point, Dan, local trades having six months notice that, or, you know, being able to kind of know that they're going to be on one site for 125 is probably the difference between being successful in three months, asking them around for three months. I, I think it's helpful. I think you still got to hold your breath till you see it work a couple of times. Because <laughs> there's lots of people that say, oh, yeah, no problem. And it's like, feels like this is going to be a problem now that you're on the site. I agree. Um, anything else on these guys? 
Okay, so then last one, um, Fading West, uh, they had the biggest gap, but that said, they, again, to, in my opinion, they did the best job of actually really looking at the site, making sure all of their product would fit and how it would be placed on the site. Uh, and it's really hard for me to ding them for giving us true pricing versus yeah. and being over than the other two after I really looked at them and not. Um, they will have the construction financing as well, which will add to this cost. Uh, and the only other thing is that my experience with Fading West has been on these types of projects is you have to 100% tease out every single cost and get up before we would go under contract with these folks because I am not going to allow them to do change orders in the midstream, which is I've seen them kind of do as their MO. They get under contract and they say, oh, you want heat pumps. Oh, you want that. And they just kind of, and, and there's no, there's zero fluctuation once we have buyers under contract because if, if the price uh, changes, yeah. then that is not going to be on our buyers. It's going to be on everyone sitting in this room because we have zero. We're not going to be able to tell someone they're buying a house for this price and then tell them, oh, surprise, it's $10,000 more because they're not already going to be pushing stretch. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that said, they, they did. The other thing that I think was interesting that Jackie actually kind of brought up was they did they did provide the one bedroom unit and one thing that you know their their most expensive units were those ones that had the underground garage and actually Jackie brought up to me yesterday I actually think we would actually have more buyers that would rather just buy an underground garage with a single story unit above like a one bedroom like certainly when I was in my twenties that's exactly what I wanted was a garage and a, an apartment for myself. Uh, so those ADU units could actually supplement those 480,000 to do on those steeper hill on the two sides of that steeper hillside and do two like two duplexes. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I think I think for buyers in this community, I think we would actually find four one bedroom buyers that would love to have a garage and a one bedroom versus a three bedroom three story unit that's four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah it's deep flexibility sure. going into the needs seeing the needs assessment says. Yeah. So it, it was an interesting one because I was I, those four eighty units were like ooh I don't feel good about putting a deed restriction on something that you can that's more expensive than what you can buy in town like it's gonna be a really I don't think I don't think we'll sell that's my point and so I would I, I kind of was in a little bit of a bind on how we were gonna deal with that with them because we weren't gonna sell those units at that price point because uh, I also can't get the prop one two three funding for that. But if we do them as a one bedroom, I can we can even get a higher fifty five thousand because we'll be at that you know we'll be in the AMI tech category for one bedrooms. So, anyways, that's just a thought on potentially just using their design a little bit more. But um, so that's you know so again if you if you go through here, um, take this with you if you want if you want to take your own notes and then put it in here. But the way I you know this is really small boxes you can you can figure it out. But at the end of the day, uh, so when we come back and it's time to make a decision, the three BOCC members are the ones that make the decision. And so I, I don't know if the three of you want to talk about how you want to look at, try to look at them all in the same lens, or if you guys just each want to come up with your own preference and then see where, have your discussion to see if you guys are in alignment um, that way. I don't want to direct you on how you should make your decision, but this certainly at least, what I, again, the stuff on the side here, though, please be thinking about when you're touring that because these are mm -hmm. these are the things that really matter. You're not tied to the lowest bid. You're tied to what is going to be the best project for your citizens. Yeah. At the end of the day. Michael, can I offer some notes on Fading West? Yeah. Ooh. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, so two, two, I have two categories of comments. Just one is regarding their uh, Fading West uh, Rail Yard Phase Three project, and then the second is just regarding. Um, my experience and the housing director's experience in Breckenridge regarding their uh, Fading West uh, 52 unit multifamily project there. Um, so just first regarding rail yard phase three is just considering that um, the Fading West has site control over the ten, approximately 10 acres in the third phase of rail yard and that infrastructure um, is, will be wrapping up like the installation of the infrastructure for Mountain View Drive. That will be finishing up here um, this, this spring and summer by um, by John Lichtenegger, and then 
rail yard will have, uh, or fitting west will have, um, you know, site control, and they can pull the trigger on developing that property whenever they want. So just in terms of economies of scale, you know, if we're bringing a fading west project to to Leadville, that gives them a little more incentive to build out phase three. Um, but at this time, that there's no deed restriction in phase three in terms of affordability. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, going to the Breckenridge project, um, so that was 52 units of multifamily public-private partnership. I talked about it all day, but I called their housing developer, their housing director, um, a couple weeks ago to ask about um, her experience. This, this is Lori Best. She's consulted the Regional Housing Authority before. Because um, I worked on that project up until the completion of entitlements and then came here um, when they were starting fabrication and construction. Um, so her, so you know, personally, I had um, a mixed experience with uh, their team. Thought they had good architecture, but they had very poor site engineering, site planning, um, going going all the way through entitlements. Um, but after I left, I already said that as a fabricator, Fading West got an A plus in terms of fabricating boxes. He said, she said they were great. Um, I, I typed up all my notes and sent it to um, to Jackie, and she can share it with the BOCC. Um, but generally speaking, they got they get an A plus. Um, on a lot of different things. The only issue in terms of fabrication and delivery was that when they stacked the boxes on site in, in bulk on a vacant lot, um, even though they were wrapped because they were stacked, there was a monsoon, like the, all the, a lot of the boxes got flooded inside. There was a lot of interior damage. Um, mm -hmm. She said that probably would have happened with anyone who did that, but just a note. Um, but what we should really push them on if, if we're talking with Fading West is on, um, you know, they communicate they're fully vertical and they're fully in-house. We should ask about that because Two years ago, they were not, um, and they they said they were, and then they ended up using an architect out outsourced DB Studio out of Denver. Um, they got a C um, in terms of they were good factory drawings, but not good site planning. Um, and then in terms of their GC, their general contractor out of Evergreen Symmetry Construction, they got a B minus on that. Uh, there's a, just a, a, a ton of issues. The set stitch was horrendous. Um, so those are just notes on previous experience with Fitting West. Again, um, you know, great. At, as a manufacturer and probably lessons learned on, on shipping, um, but we need to push on you know, what they're communicating as being ver vertical, uh, fully vertical and, and, and in-house, ask questions about that. Is it fair to um, talk with them and understand if uh, working with them would help mobilize really our phase three, if there's any efficiencies or if they, to think about um yeah i think you know the, the the what i would see is and and i would what i would say is that chapin's experience i think is a lot what i heard from other references on fading west on their initial but i think they that again i think there's been some growing pains with them I'm, I'm just glad we're not in the first rounds of them. I think they've learned a lot because um, I had dealt with them out in Kit Carson um, and they've they've definitely improved their ability to deliver, but their first couple of projects were rough. That was just the general consensus. I think, I think if you check their references, of, like the, the newer projects that they've been doing, like the one that they did in Bancha, and the one they did, John Cattles, who they referenced in Gunnison. Um, yeah, I work, work with John all the time, so I'll certainly be giving him a call and asking if he's had any issues. But I think they've, I think they've matured, and I and I do agree with Jay Ben. Like they didn't originally have an in-house piece, and so we need to figure out if that's if that how that's gone. So. The other note was that you know they you know, they say that they're fully vertical, but their site plan was drawn by the same. Um, but by the same draftsman that drew for another one of our respondents. Um, it was, um, I think it was. Mountain Dutchman. Yeah, yeah Mountain Dutchman. Mm -hmm. so, some, so somehow their, their draftsman for their site planning is being done by the same person as another company. Um, so if they're fully vertical, then how does that happen? Yeah. I guess, I, I guess I'm also asking, I'm sorry, there's an answer to that question. No, go ahead. I guess I'm also asking, is there a way to work together County and city to offer an incentive to Fading West to reduce their costs if mobilizing for their site could be um, some overall cost savings to them? I think we've done everything we can, Sarah, to 
incentivize them. I mean, we, we're going in and we're putting in all the utility work, we're doing excavation for them for our project. So they're, they, sh they, they, I mean, you're, your price point for these units should be significantly lower than what they're able to do them in the rail yard for. Does that make sense? I mean, we're doing tap fees. We're putting in utilities to the property lines. I mean, they're they're coming in and digging foundations and putting them up. They wouldn't get that with with the city right now because they're not deed restricted. So, um, the one thing I would add on this is that you know we if, if we're able to, we're going to be able to get these. I mean, if you look at their current 21,000 over affordability, if we get Prop 123 on 100% AMI, we would actually still, we'd be able to drop that price point by 55,000 units. So um, I will say, don't be thinking that the state adds so much additional extra costs to, like they're gonna require, they're gonna require a 15% contingency that's in the budget, which drives me nuts because they're gonna add a, at like eight hundred thousand dollars of costs that I'm going to have to use their money to cover. So it's like it's, they got to figure something out. But that's not here or there. Um, all right. So then the last piece. So I know we got a hard stop at eleven. So I want to be mindful of that. So I just want to talk to the commissioners about the next steps here. So my suggestion um, as we continue on negotiations is uh, it sounds like the tours will be wrapped up next. So Friday, so we'll do Thursday and Denver, and, and Friday, and then Friday at Fading West. So um, at your next meeting, then what I would suggest we do in open session is that you instruct me and Jackie to re to have the, both to to go back and have all three contractors revise their bids, mm -hmm. um, and to add on any of these additions and clarify where they're at, um, and. We can discuss, you know, like with Fading West, for example, does instead of doing this 480 units, let's see what they can do two units of one bedrooms over garages. Yeah. Let's see what those, how that affects their pro forma, et cetera. So those are examples that you can instruct us. And we, we certainly, as a group, the, the development subcommittee will be drafting a memo with recommendations. So don't feel like it's only on you to come up with that list. We will provide you with our own document list and then the commissioner certainly can add to that. What we need to get to though is that at the end of June is a decision. And your decision is this. Your decision is to go in under contract for design, not for construction. The construction co contract is going to come later, but we need to get them a design stipend uh, in our architecture feed to prepare the, the plans. So when we have them revise their bids as well, we're also going to require them to tell us how much it's going to cost for them to get to, what, 95% on, on building plans? Um, so um, there'll be some final, some final adjustments that they'll need to make on those plans, but we need to get there uh, by the end of July. And so they, okay. they'll, they're, ooh, we have a month to put that together. And again, because it's all modular, I'm not overly concerned about that. Um, but we need to be able to move forward with the, the horizontal construction for the sewer lines and the water lines and Excel energy and pay for those costs this year. So the work session, there's a work session next week at, for them to, a formal action would be the 18th, which is so close for them to respond. I'm wondering if we could do something, um, sure. giving direction on the 11th, because that gives these three applicants or proposers time to address their concerns and they'll be fresh from the site visit. So, so do they need to be in formal meeting to give direction on revising bids? Uh, at least in the, a work session or something. There has to be something to give because it's it's discussing a, a sure. So what I'm asking is can they do that do that in the work session because they're not yeah. making any action? Yeah, because it's you're not making a decision, it's just to give guidance <laughs> to staff, so that's fine. Yeah, we can certainly get you as a, a memo by the way. Yes. Okay. I'm out on the eleventh, so I'm not I'm not gonna make those work sessions. Would it be okay to provide us with email? Yeah. With any that's email okay. concerns? Because yeah. yeah. I, I think we can ask for a pretty quick turnaround. Okay. Again, it's it's I don't think anything we're asking for is major. It's it's um, you know like what's it going to cost the courts in? What's it going to cost to you know for you guys to think about? I will push. I mean, um, 
on my side of things, I'm going to be pushing on solution builders to what Dan has said, like how much flexibility is there within your team to actually design and duplex. Yeah. And uh, with Fading West, it's like we want to see those three bedroom, two baths to be one you know, one bedroom garage, garage units like the ADUs and see what they what they think. Uh, and then with Adam Berg, it's like give us give us your pricing, like what's it going to cost to, yeah. to put real siding on these things, the flooring to be engineered flooring, and, you know, not hollow doors. Um, we don't want to buy metal hubs. And the other thing that they had on their proposal too, they were using Indie Dwell. Indie Dwell doesn't exist, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're 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 one those the shotgun units. Those were Indie Dwell units. And, I, and between, for what it's worth, I really hated any dual units. I, I was working for the Economic Development District down there that's out of Pueblo, and so they were like, that's this is the greatest thing since slight spread. They didn't, need, like, they didn't have built-in closets in those things. Like, they had vents between bedrooms, so like, you could like, see to <laughs> the bedroom. Yeah. I mean, it was, I was like, I can't put anybody in this. Huh. That I'm comfortable. Like, if you had a kid, and your kid, you could hear your kids' conversations online with their teddy bear. <laughs> that was solution. No, but they they're using Bonneville now. So, but I, my point is, is that on those proposals, those images, those images are in the dwell. So those on on I'm sorry on Adam Burgers or solution. Adam Burgers, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So if you go in his proposal, the image that he shows of those one one story units, um, yeah, yeah, these, yeah. I'm also wondering, um, would it be helpful for us, and we might not have time today, but um, it seems like giving a little more direction as far as the layout of the site, whether we want front seat, or back seat, or, or front seat the back, like, should we try to push one way or another? And I know that's kind of a I would say out of I would stay out of that for now for the because again what I would say again you're trying to get to that level of detail to get to where we need to go is going to require weeks of design which okay. you as commissioners need to be thinking because this again the nice thing is this is all modular so you need to be understanding what the boxes and delivery is going to cost because regardless any of these kind of like retaining walls or stuff like that they're going to be costs that you're going to see for many of these groups mm -hmm. right so um my feeling is were you if i was in your shoes i guess was my way of looking at this if i'm in, if I'm in your shoes and trying to make a decision you really what you really want to be able to say is okay these all have comparable levels of finish now these yeah. all have these all have you know these designs have been vetted and I'm comparing this price point versus this price point for this price point. And again, at the end of the day, it's like, who is going to deliver best for your residents? And that's, that's, that's where I want you guys to get to, because then it's contingent on me and working with Chapin and working with the design committee to come back with a performa and design. The housing needs assessments going to really inform a lot of like the bedroom count, Sarah, and we don't have that info. So, um, the soil tests are being done today. Good news, so the hospital district site was decent soil. So I don't think we're going to have any major surprises. It was sand and then a little bit of the clay once we got the frost dip out there. So um, so I think we got good percolation and I don't think there's going to be any expensive. Well, I'll find out on 3rd Street here in a little bit. So I'm going to go over there right afterwards. So we'll look at the pits. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Yep. Um, Maybe it's worth asking Adam Berger and Solution Builders if they have a one bedroom ADU sort of thing as well. I mean, I think maybe using one to subsidize the other on Fading West is okay, but I think their price point is, even with all the inclusions, I think their box price point is concerning to me. Yep. So if we can get a better deal out of the other two with a similar feature, you know, a similar model. And then I guess also, Jackie, yeah, you could ask Kyle about paving works here. They, they did I don't know, maybe four of those for paving works. So. so we've hit 11. I want to make sure we have, so we had a hard stop. If there's any other questions that we need to talk about today. So again, 
when you do make your decision, just remember you're making a design decision, okay. and the risk to the county is going to just be that those design costs. Yeah, I I think if it, I mean I think Sarah and I are are more. Or I don't know about you, Sarah. I think we're a little more flexible if we want to keep going. Uh, Hal had the hard stop. I don't know about you, Sarah. I'm flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, so we can wrap up a little more calmly. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think um, again the. You know, just keep in mind that the next, what I what what I think is really important for the commissioners is just this process for you is being done in a way that if you if you your next decision point is probably going to cost you roughly seventy five thousand dollars to move forward, yeah. right? Because that's going to be your architectural fees. So before and then at that point, once we have design, we will have true costs, and we will be putting that into a contract, the construction contract. And then as well as the other big piece that the most important thing for the commissioners and your responsibility of working with your, your legal staff is that we will need to guarantee surety if we have to transfer land assets. And uh, we'll also have to make sure that we get the deed restriction recorded against the land prior to any kind of transfer. So okay. we ha that will happen this fall once we get to the to the actual design, we have actual costs because we will be putting in there penalties for not delivering on contracts and et cetera. So they're going to they're going to lose their profit first before they lose anything else. And then we're also going to have hold a executable letter of credit if we transfer the land to buy the land back if they go anywhere close to the fall. Gotcha. I had a couple of questions just in terms of our thinking, just want to make sure like um, I mean, there was some discussion of asking different builders about being flexible on exactly what units get built. Like when, I mean, I guess a couple aspects of that. One is just so I don't want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples in terms of the unit mix, but also like, I mean, how do you, how do you ask them that? Because at some point you need to lock that in, right? <laughs> so they, they did response. When I was asking yeah. that phasing question, yeah. I asked every one of them what was their minimum amount of units. Yeah, but I was thinking more of like if we're like, oh, like we don't have any buyers for the three bedrooms, can you switch to building two and one bedroom? Like I imagine that's going to, I think like, at, at some point that's easier and at some point that's harder. <laughs> so the way it works out, so that's a great question. It's a, it's a process question. So the way it will tease itself out is that Jackie will do a pre-qualification for two months of the lottery. Mm -hmm. And when people are putting in their names, they'll be saying, I, I'm putting in for a three bedroom. I'm putting in for a two bedroom. And so if we see that there's only like two households that are putting in for a three bedroom, then we'll have to do a, you know, we'll have to shift. Yeah. Uh -huh. we'll to, but the, the, again, where I'm at on that, Jeff, is again if because these aren't stick belt they're modular it's a it's a it's a trading yeah in and out, so yeah i think it was also more sort of like how does that affect their i mean make sure we understand how that affects their sort of pricing their bid yes so I yeah, yeah yeah um and then i guess the other thing was i mean a lot of our discussion was around things that weren't on this rubric. and this rubric's really helpful but like a lot of it was around like did they talk to local subs? Did they really talk to local subs? Like, you know, what, how much in, you know, I think a lot of the discussion was to the degree the three applicants had put in the time to understand what they're getting into. So, I mean, that, I mean, to me, that's a totally fine scoring criteria, right? Yeah. And I think <laughs> if you look on the Rubik's, there's yeah. a line item down below. Uh, what's the name of it? It's the. Oh. There we go. Yeah, it's on there. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't flip it over. Sorry. Fantastic. So there, it's on there. Yeah. Maybe we should wait it more. I agree with probably with Dan. That's probably that's probably a little bit more weight. So do you guys want to give that twenty points? Yeah. Again, there's no such. There's no, no special thing to the numbers. I mean, there's that. I mean, there's that practical aspect of yeah. Have you worked in the mountains? Do you have real relationships with subs? Like I was impressed. Like you know, solution builders had taken the time to what seemed like have some like pretty in depth discussions with Jack Saunders. Like for you know that that's to me scores way higher than what Adam Berger's group did, what they had gotten. <laughs> you know, um, 
so and then um yeah and then also sort of similarly like the different applicants have take done more or less work on actually thinking about the site and like how things would fit up here um yeah. like so. i said you know I, I think when you meet with each of them my hope is that vocc what i what i've seen through this process is what what typically happens is the three of you will probably have your top two that will rise to the top and then there'll be discussion of like okay what do we really want to go with yeah. and, and again i'm being sincere and saying i keep saying this but i'm being sincere i i can work with any of the three mm -hmm. um to get there i do think from a, from a staff perspective though you know there's there's certain levels of like the there's yeah i think fading west has a much better understanding of the local environment versus solution builders actually being able to sell the units and have a marketing department mm -hmm. so it's like which one which one is more important to us but um again at the end of the yeah. day it's part of what we have to pick up on the back end to make sure the project's successful yeah and on if i can ask on solution builders i mean i i was their proposal was interesting to me because it seemed like i mean they were honest about it they're this they haven't really done this before but they said but we're really committed to getting into this kind of work so it's like okay that's good that you know what <laughs> you know that you know this is going to be some new um you know attributes of the project so I, I i mean i appreciated that honesty and that they seemed interested but i was i was curious if anyone sort of had heartburn or i i, I like 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 how honest that or genuine that well they felt so i can just tell you from my experience because i work with other clients yeah. they they have been very aggressive in pursuing other rfps yeah um, and I think they're every time they do this, I'm seeing that they're starting to learn a little bit more yeah. and they're learning that the master plan community isn't what happens in these smaller towns of the, yeah. and the resort communities and that they're having to design product. And so I guess it's like, I'm not, I am, I have done this enough where I am. I think I can easily work with a big firm like that and get to yeah, like, no, yeah. no, 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 you need this. Not the cookie cutter. Like you, you got it. You're going to have to do this, this yeah. and this, and you're going to have to put the roof on when it gets here and plan on that. And like, just, just mm -hmm. like those necessary steps, the architecture design things that they need to like, you know, yeah. like the cheesy, some of the cheesy stuff that they can do get away with in Denver that isn't going to work here. Yeah. So, um, but Again, I think I've never been to their factory and I've never seen them. So I'm really interested that like, I'll be, be there with you guys on Thursday. Um, and then, like I said, uh, I would love to stick around. I got a, I got a jet, at, literally jet to DIA um, for a wedding, but I will go to Adam Berg uh, on, on Monday on my way out to do other site visits. Okay. So I'll have my own opinions on both. And then again, I think, so then on the 11th, the development subcommittee. I'll get you guys something on Monday um, after I see Edinburgh, and then we can, we can kind of come into the work session. And you guys can certainly give me your, your initial impression. So you guys won't be flying solo without a. You'll have a. You'll have a. You'll have a written memo that's public from the development subcommittee on Mon or on Tuesday for your work session. And okay. just to give you your itinerary, um, we need to be at their factory, at Solution Builders Factory, and I'll send out an invitation. We need to be there at 9 a.m., so it's an early start in Denver. Then we'll do Adam Berger at 2 p.m., um, and his is just going to be drawing some homes. So we'll do a factory okay. and some homes with Solution Builders up with homes in the morning. Okay. And then 1 p.m. for those who have not seen Fading West um, on Friday. Okay. Sarah, it looks like you had some. Uh, yeah, I am sorry if I didn't quite track you, Michael, but it seems like um, regarding like the infrastructure pieces, will you get a better summary of that for us? Hey, so, sorry, um, what was the first part of that? Like the as far as the infrastructure and the hospital site plan and. 
all those things, will we have some better idea of those total expenses? Yeah, so, um, I'm sorry, there, there's, the, yeah, well, so I'll send you the memo. I, I don't, the wait, did you send it, sir? Mm -hmm. I got the, yes. I got, okay, I got the spreadsheet. No, there's a, there's another memo on, the, that I summarized the costs. Okay. So I'll get, I'll get to, I'll make sure so you get we, it, sir. So we do have that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see that. Okay, I'm sorry, you did send that to me. I didn't, I see it. Um, so that, those okay. those those costs, I'm fairly comfortable with. The only one I'm not comfortable with that wasn't in this memo after today's site visit, going over there is, so Chapin, um, there's like a attached curb sidewalk that's like two feet. It's like a giant curb that's crumbling in front of everything else in front of there. You said that we have we don't have to put a sidewalk or curb in there in front of eight. Sorry, in front of the sixth street, right? Correct. There, yeah, there's not a requirement for for infill development for curb and gutter and sidewalk. Yeah, that wouldn't mix. It wouldn't tie in, right? It wouldn't wind up flooding the hospital building. Put a curb in front of there. Um, yeah, that would only be required if there was some level of, of subdivision beside like a town home plot where there, you know, right of way dedication. You know, like a like a uh, rail yard project. Okay. Um, so yeah, sir. That that the only other cost that isn't on here. Is that I I thought I had recalled that the the um, electric behind there was like a full three phase or two phase going across the back. It's not. So we're gonna have we're gonna have Excel Energy costs as well. Uh, gas is in the alley, so the gas is gonna be relatively cheap. Gas is just cheap to extend, but the the trans the price the price per transformer is about I'm guessing depending on our density again. You can normally run about two units per transformer, and it's about thirty grand a transformer running around. That's what oh, I was paying. Um, Chief, and I, that one percent account from Excel, I can't remember what that's called, but the four hundred thousand that went to the rail yard is that banked up? Is that what's the balance of that currently? You say that. You say to the city. Could you repeat that? What? Could you repeat the the one per? She was asking there's that the, the city holds a one percent franchise fee from Excel. Yeah. I haven't been involved with that. There, there was a there's some account that um, the city dedicated four hundred thousand for infrastructure from Excel from this from that franchise fee or whatnot. I wonder what the balance is on that, and if we might be able to put a request together for the city to contribute that to the project. I can, yeah, I can find out, but that hasn't come across yet. Javen said he'll look into it. Thanks. Um, yes. So then the, all the other things, do we want to ask them, do we want to list that, like the quality, the site design, the unit design, flexibility, and the marketing and peripheral support, and then the finance pieces, do we want to give all that to the three before we was it, or? No, I think what we're going to do is you guys are going to do your site visits. The, the stuff on that Rubik's, again, you can use the Rubik's if you want. I'm like, a, I, I can't sit there and take notes and do, do the site visit. So I personally wouldn't use a Rubik's myself. So I don't want, you know, but I wanted to give you guys things to think about on that Rubik's. What, I, what we'll do at the work session, Sarah, is the staff will provide a initial list of how they need to revise their bids. And then as well as your comments from your site visits. Okay. And then we'll take that and I will issue a, it won't be like a uh, just catch all for all three. It'll be a direct mem or a direct request to their bid re revisions for each company. So we will instruct them that they have, they have a week to revise their bids based on these following things that we saw that we want. When, I know you said it, when, when are we trying to do the work session? Uh, on the 11th. It's your regular work session, and we'll keep it short. And we'll, I'll I'll come prepared with a list for each one. Well, that's okay. Just to me. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, everyone. It's not a busy your work session. So. <laughs> how much how much time I keep taking? <laughs> so all right. Um. Anything else from? Like, are we good on? The contract piece and how we're going to move forward, like the two step. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. 
guy. The, the other thing that's not on here is architecture fees. You know, we will we will get a proposal for the costs on architecture fees for each of those. Again, I would strongly suggest that we look to the congressional hopefully funding or whatever. But I, I the reason I would say that we should pay for architecture fees is we control the process versus if they if if we compensate them for if we compensate them for architecture fees and then we decide we don't want to proceed. We've compensated them, and we have no obligation. Yeah. Versus, if we don't do it that way, then so that's my that's why I would, I would do it that way. It, it just gets again. It takes. It's worth the seventy thousand dollars to relieve yourself of the risk of not having to move forward. In my opinion, which is a small risk on a nine million dollar project. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Yeah. So, when you come yeah. out, Tracy. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. So I will say that more clearly into the microphone. Um, Hal Edwards had to leave a oh sorry Sarah did no, I just we're not we're oh, not we're okay. gonna have to come out and make an emotion, right? Or are yeah, we you need to, yeah, to come out of executive session, yes. Okay. So go on and but we're not, we're not making any other motion, right? No. Correct. Yeah, so no decisions are being made at this time. Yeah. This is just informational. Sarah, you want to go for that motion? Oh, um, I'll move to come out of executive session at 1116 a.m. Um, and just to note, Commissioner Edwards has left the meeting at 11. Great. I will second. Uh, uh, she's on her way. Cool. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay, we have exited executive session and just waiting for the clerk. Uh, 1117. Yeah, she's on her way. So if the three of you guys wouldn't mind just putting in a bullet points, you might need to just pass that in here. Thank you. Kind of too long. Okay. Um, Tracy's here, so we we're oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, assume that anything I put in there but like for like solution builders to do for us thing. Thanks. And just so you know, we have the reporting going the whole time. There's no unrecorded portion. Make sure Tom doesn't upload that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm ready. Okay. Um, we exited executive session at 11 17 a.m. We did note um, how Edwards, Commissioner Edwards, had to leave at 11 for another meeting. Um, uh, so, um, and no decisions were made. It was just informational for the commissioners. Uh, and that was all the business we did. So I think we just need to adjourn our special meeting, which we will do at 1118. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thank you. 45 seconds. <laughs>